Hey, how's it going guys? This is Dave2D and this is my review of the Dell XPS 15 with the Infinity Display. So one of the first YouTube videos I ever did was the XPS 13 with the Infinity Display. I really liked that device, but it wasn't powerful enough for what I wanted in a daily device. Like I wanted a quad core processor and I wanted a bigger screen. So I've been using a 15 inch Retina MacBook Pro. But recently Dell dropped this thing, the XPS 15, and they've updated it with the Infinity Display. It's kind of like the XPS 13, but everything has just been amped up. So here are my thoughts. It comes in a black box, pretty plain, but at least that's black and not just like brown cardboard, right? Inside you get the laptop itself and some pamphlets. The AC adapter and the extension cord come in a separate box. Okay, so the top surface is aluminum and it's got a really nice finish to it. It feels premium, it feels durable, and it doesn't show fingerprints really easily. On the bottom, we have two rubber strips for grip and they also help to raise the laptop for air intake through this big grill here. And just like the 13 inch, it has a flap, which is apparently here to hide the serial numbers and the FCC markings. And the reason why I know this is because like 500 people told me in the comments of my XPS 13 video. Thanks guys. You can open it up pretty easily when you remove some screws. And on the inside, we have a battery, upgradable RAM, as well as an upgradable M2 SATA drive. This is kind of refreshing because so many laptops have soldered on RAM these days. The bottom plate has a thin sheet of copper, which I think they put in here to help with thermals. And the whole bottom plate is like really rigid despite being so thin. So I tried to twist it and it didn't really do much. In fact, the whole laptop is just really sturdy. The screen doesn't have much flex. The chassis is really solid. The exterior edges are also really nicely machined. I think they did a really good job on the aesthetics and build quality. Okay, going around the sides, on the right side we have an SD card slot, a USB 3 port, a light up battery indicator, and I love these little light up indicators, and a lock slot. On the left side we have a power socket, another USB 3 port, HDMI 1.4 port, a USB 3.1 Type-C with Thunderbolt port, and a combo headphone and mic jack. It comes in a bunch of different configurations starting at $1,000, but the unit I'm reviewing is a Skylake quad-core i7 running at 2.6 gigahertz, a 4K touchscreen, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage, a GTX 960M, and it's currently going for around $2,100 US. It's roughly the same length as a 15 inch Retina MacBook Pro, but it's noticeably shorter from front to back. So it's basically like a 15 inch laptop in what feels like a 14 inch footprint. It's 4.5 pounds, which is the same weight as the 15 inch Retina MacBook Pro. And because it's a smaller footprint, it just feels like a pretty dense package. When you open the lid, you get that awesome carbon fiber. Now I'm a sucker for this stuff. And I really think that Dell does carbon better than any other laptop company right now. It's strong, it's subtle, and it's coated with some kind of like soft touch material. So it's comfortable to rest your palms on it. So just enjoy this carbon fiber porn that I shot. The keyboard is decent. Uh, the layout is nice. It's actually one of the better layouts I've seen and the three stage backlighting is good, but typing on it feels pretty similar to the XPS 13 with relatively short key travel. I think it's at 1.3 millimeters. It's still good, but it's not great. The trackpad is nice. It's glass, it's big, and it works really well. It's still not as good as a MacBook trackpad, but it's pretty close and it's one of the best Windows trackpads right now. You'll probably really like this thing. The screen is a 15.6 inch IPS touch panel with a resolution of 3840 by 2160 and it's LED backlit and it's fantastic. So the bezel is super thin and it really lives up to the whole infinity edge trademark. Contrast is great, viewing angles are great and the touch screen is really responsive. There's a Dell utility here to adjust the color profile of the screen. On the Adobe RGB setting, this thing is like really color accurate for both print and web. The screen is really nice. It doesn't have the anti-glare coating that MacBook Pros have, but it's such a bright screen that it's still very usable in brightly lit rooms or outdoors. Now I can't speak about the power consumption or the weight of the actual panel, but visually I think it's one of the best 15 inch screens on the market right now. And just like the XPS 13, the camera's on the bottom again, which I think is unavoidable because of the super thin bezels. It's not high enough resolution for Microsoft Hello, but the image quality isn't bad. Okay, let's talk performance. I'm actually running the 256 gig drive. It's a Samsung PM951 and the 256 gig model is pretty slow. My configuration normally comes with the 512 gig drive, which is quite a bit faster, but I swapped mine out with a coworker and the 256 gig version I have now is pretty gimpy. I don't use much storage, so I normally would never upgrade a drive, but in this case I would just because of the slow speed of the 256 gig model. Video editing is nice. 4K edits are smooth. I rendered my iPad Pro video using the XPS 15 and it took 48 minutes. A fully loaded 15 inch MacBook Pro from 2015 took 57 minutes. So it's around 15% faster. I think Adobe Premiere really likes CUDA cores. 
Gaming is also really good on this. It's running a GTX 960M, so light games like Heroes of the Storm or Dota 2, those are gonna run at 50, 55 frames per second at 1080p on high graphics. On extreme graphics, I was getting around 35 to 40 frames per second. And more demanding stuff like Rust, I had to drop the graphics setting pretty low to make it playable. You can hit 50 or 60 frames per second if you want, but you have to crank your graphics really low. The speakers are okay, they're kind of forward facing, but they're underneath the keyboard and I noticed that I could feel the vibrations of the sound on the keys while I was playing games. It wasn't bad or anything, but I haven't experienced anything like that before. And the sound is a little echoey, maybe because of the location of the speakers, but they're not bad and they get pretty loud. Fan noise is not bad, it's silent at idle and around 30 decibels under load, and the thermals are also good, there's nothing too hot and there's no crazy hot spots on the keyboard or anything. I think Dell did a really good job on thermal and noise management on this thing. It's a 130 watt charger. It has that glowing ring at the AC adapter tip again, so you can find it in the dark. And it's reasonably small for 130 watts. When the battery's low, the light at the front of the laptop changes to orange, and then it changes to white when it's charging. It takes about two hours for a full charge. Now, battery life is a little complicated. This unit has a 4K screen and an 85 watt hour battery. You can get a 1080p screen with the same size battery, and you can also get a 1080p screen with a smaller 56 watt hour battery. And that's for configurations with a disk drive instead of the SSD. So on my configuration, I was getting around six hours of regular use with screen at around 75% brightness. And playing games, I was getting around two and a half hours. Now supposedly on the 1080p model with the 84 watt hour battery, you can get double the battery life. But for my use, the 4K screen is pretty important and the battery life isn't that bad. Okay, let's do a recap. XPS 15, awesome build quality, aluminum exterior, carbon fiber chassis. The 4K touchscreen is outstanding. It's really bright, color accurate with super thin bezels. The keyboard is comfortable, not the best, but very usable. The trackpad is glass and it's one of the best Windows trackpads right now. On the inside, we have a Skylake i7, a GTX 960M that's really capable for 4K video edits and most games at 1080p. There's a pair of upgradable RAM slots, which is pretty rare these days. And there's an upgradable or downgradable in my case, M2 SSD socket. And lastly, there's an 84 watt hour battery that lasts around six hours on the 4K screen. All right, there's a lot of good stuff going on inside the XPS 15, but I don't love that M2 SATA drive. It's a little bit slower than I'd like it to be. But aside from that, I think all the hardware choices they went with were really good. The battery life isn't amazing, but it's kind of expected when you have a 4K screen in something that has this kind of footprint. I mean, you can only put in so many battery cells into a device this size. Is it a MacBook killer? I would consider this a better buy than a MacBook, unless you need like a really long battery life or unless you need OS 10, I would consider this a better purchase because it's a better performer. But aside from that, I think like there's no other notebook right now that is this caliber. It's really well built, it's a great performer, and it looks awesome. That's the end of this review. Hope you guys liked it. Thumbs if you did, subs if you loved it. It's been nice, and I'll see you guys next time.